Hi guys, welcome back to the Tactic Tester video today. Today we are testing the tactic by RDF, which is this tactic, RDF Cool Underdogs, which is a tactic that is suitable for underdogs. I will leave the link for the tactic in the description below, so you guys can download it on yourself. We have a 4411 formation today, a sleeper keeper on defense, two wing back on support, two ball playing defender on defense. One deep line playmaker on the left on support, one ball winning midfielder on the right on support, two winger on attack, both right and left midfield rather than attacking midfielders. We have one attacking midfielders on attack, one advance forward on attack. We have positive mentality in possession, we're gonna attack fairly wide, pass in space, or left, right, and left. Play our defense, shorter passing directness, standard passing tempo, low crosses in the final third, work ball into box. Run at defense. In transition, we're gonna counter press when position has been lost. Counter when position has been won. Goalkeeper is gonna distribute to fullbacks. Out of position, we're gonna use offside trap. Much higher line of engagement. Much higher defensive line. Defense narrow. Use title marking. Extremely urgent pressing intensity. Prevent short goalkeeper distribution. Get stuck in. Advance forward have two instructions, which is tackle harder and mark tighter. Attacking midfielder have moved into channels, tackle harder and mark tighter. While the two wingers have the same instructions, which is the tackle harder and mark tighter as well. Deep line playmaker also have tackle harder and mark tighter. Ball winning midfielder have mark tighter instructions. Left wing back and right wing back is only one difference, which is sit narrower for the left wing back, so he is gonna tuck in to form a three at the back alongside both two ball playing defenders. While the right wing back have other instructions, like left back is take more risks. Close from deep, shoot less often, tackle harder, and mark tighter. The ball playing defender have pass it shorter, dribble more on the right ball playing defender, but dribble less on the left hand side ball playing defender. Both have shoot less often and mark tighter. Super keeper, we have take fewer risks. This is how the defending tactics looks like, while the attacking corner tactics looks like this. Today we're gonna test with two team one in the Premier League, which is Brighton, as you can see here. The other team is Leche, I think that's how you say it, I'm not too sure with the pronunciation, but they are predicted to finish uh, 20 in Serie A, which is last place in the league. Um, Brighton, let's go back to Brighton and see where they are predicted to finish in the Premier League. Brighton are predicted to finish 17, also very low. Let's sim forward and see how both teams do with this tactic. Start off by Leche, we finished in 9th, 53 points, 15 wins, 8 draws, 15 loss, which means we finished top half, which is not bad considering we are predicted to finish last in the league. We have Babaka, top goal scorer, Donati, the top assist, score 47 goals in the league, 9 highest. 43 goals conceded, 12 best in the league, most yellow cards and also most red cards. Team stats, we have Babaka, 13 goals, most in the team, we already mentioned that. He's the striker because he can only play striker. This Alessandro got 8 goals, let's see where does he play, probably central midfield. Right midfield actually, okay, the winger. And then we got this Farias, he's not even a starter but still got 5 goals. He's a backup striker or backup central attacking midfielder I think. Yeah, backup striker, that's why he still got 5 goals even, he didn't play a lot. Maya, Zan Maya, 4 goals. Not a regular starter as well but still got some decent starts number. He probably played as a central midfielder. He played as a left mid, okay. Next is this guy, uh, Patricio. 4 goals from central midfield this time for sure, but where? Ball playing defender or deep line playmaker, both, okay. This Marco Calderoni guy, 4 goals, left back or left mid I think this time. Left mid, yeah, exactly like I mentioned. And then this guy uh, only can play central midfield, 4 goals. Luca Rossettini, 3 goals from centre back or right back. I think centre back, yep, centre back. Falcon, 2 goals from uh, attacking the field, yep. Assist, we have Donati, the right back with 10 assists, and then Falcon, 8 assists. Uh, where did he play again? I forget. Did I check him already? Central attacking the field, I think so, but I forget already. Rispoli, 4 assists from right back or right mid, either one I think. 
both actually, but mostly at right mid. Most chances created by 90 minutes, we have uh, the first starter is Falcon, 0.66, and then this also not started. Donati, the right back, goes 0.39. Chances created are not that great. Most key passes per 90 minutes, we have this Ruiz guys with 2.15, the central midfield, and then this guy is not started. Patricio, 1.75, and then Falcon, 1.72. In the league, Bubaka scored 13 goals at 6th place, not too bad considering we have really finished 20. Assist-wise, we have Falcon with 8 at 9th place and then also Donati together at 8 assists as well. Clean sheets, we got Gabriel at 15th place, 10 clean sheets only, not the greatest. Team stats, we have actually quite high average possession, I'm surprised, 52% at 5th place, very good. Yellow cards already mentioned, first most in the league 113 red cards also the most six most goals we are ninth with 47 already mentioned as well cross completion ratio very low with 18 only 17 percent okay crosses completed i bet we also not that high 215 goals from corner only three okay this attacking corner technically definitely don't try it if you see brighton also don't have a good result with it we will see that later Pass completion ratio, we are 84% with 9. Passes completed, we are very low actually, 15 with 13k roughly. Chances created, we are third with 93. Not too bad considering our quality are not the greatest. Shots on target ratio, we are 50% with 6th place. Shots on target, we are 242 at 11th place. Mid table. Conversion ratio, we are also kind of like above mid table. 9% with 7 plays. Dribbles per game, we have 16. Not far first place, only one behind. Most goals for Brighton, we have Mopay, definitely playing a striker. And then Aramoy, 8 goals. Where does he play though? He can play a lot of positions, that's the thing. Right mid or DM, okay. McAllister, 8 goals. He can also play central attacking field and left mid. He probably left mid more, yep, because he trained that left mid position now. 6 goals from Solimach. Where does he play? Mm. He can play a little position as well. Make some, but mostly left mid. Four goals from Pascal Gross, central attacking midfielder, I think this time. Let's check. Yep. Dell Stevens, three goals from central midfield. Webster, two goals from center back. Most of the goals from Brighton came from Malpay. A lot of them got zero goals, or only like one goal or two. Assist wise, mainly come from Pascal Gross, the central attacking midfielder, and then McCaster got nine. But another left back got six. Montoya, right back, got four. Everyone got four. More pay, we got 3, Hambash 3, but not a starter for him. Proper 3 from central midfield, or even central attacking midfield, I think. DM only, okay. Most chances created by 90 minutes. Uh, the first starter is Pascal Gross, the central attacking midfielder expected. 0.59, solely match, the left mid, 0.43. And then next is Aaron Moy, 0.33. Most key passes per game, first starter is also Pascal Gross with 1.8 and then proper second with 1.67 from central mid. Dale Stevens 1.54 from central mid as well and then Aramoy follows up with 1.52. Most goals for Brighton, we have more pace, second place 24 goals, just 3 behind Bloody, not too bad. Assist wise, we have Pascal Gross also, just 1 behind first place which is Gilfi Sigurdsson with 14, Pascal Gross got 13. Mechanical got 9 at 6th place. Clean sheets, we have Matt Ryan at 7th place with 13 clean sheets. Not too bad, above mid table. Average possession, we have 50% with 10th in the league. Yellow cards, we also have the most, like Lecce in CR 83, the most. Red cards, this time not the most, 3, but still a 5th place. We score 55 goals, 8 in the league, not too bad considering, like you see. Top 7 are all good teams, like we are the relegation favourite team. Cross completion ratio, we are very low, 20 actually, 15% only, okay. Crosses completed, we are also 20 with 172. Goals from corner, only 3 as well, okay. This proves that the attacking corner for this tactic is not that useful. Pass completion ratio, we are 11th place with 83%. Passes completed, we are 15 with roughly 13k as well, like let's say. Chances created, we are quite low actually this time. 9 with 85 in the league. Shots on target ratio, we are second with 52%. Shots on target, we have 227, 13 in the league. 
conversion ratio, but we are the best 12% conversion ratio. Most triples we get, we are second, two behind the first place Man City. Consider 43 goals, seven alongside Arsenal in the league. It's alright. Looking at the schedule for the chair first, we only gonna go through like big big results, like ignore the sources because we're gonna get a lot, you see, like Juventus. Uh, losing the Fiorentina. Okay, 1-1 one, one against Napoli here, October not too bad. 2-1 against AS Roma, away is a great result. 5-1 against Bologna, away, not too bad. 2-1 uh, in extra time against Fiorentina to go to the Coppa Italia next round is great too. 2-2 two, two against Lazio at home, okay, decent. 3-1 against Sampdoria. 2-1 against Juventus at home, mmm, that's tasty result there. Nail nil against Napoli away, one nil against Roma at home. Did we did double against Roma uh, in the league? Yes, we did, but we did lost to them in the Coppa Italian first round though. At the end of last two months, not much great results. We only get three wins out of nine games. It's not the greatest, but overall, eh, all right, finish nine, and then. We are pretty good finish 20, remember? Now let's look at Brighton. Same with Brighton, we're only gonna go through like big, big results. Okay, start off with a very interesting one. 6-1 against Bournemouth. 3-0 against Man United. Aaron Moore with the hat-trick at home. Okay, that's very, very good. Got knocked out by Arsenal in the EFL Cup third round. And then 4-2 against Tottenham at home. Great result. 1-0 against Wolves is also not too bad. 4-4 against Manchester City. Okay. 1-0 against Liverpool! Ah, Brighton have some big results compared to Leche, but of course Leche are way weaker team in the league compared to Brighton. Brighton, I don't think they're supposed to predict them to finish 17, but anyway the game says so. 3-2 against Arsenal! Hmm, away as well. Okay, tough results here, like, didn't get any win out of these games, but it's all tough positions, okay, never mind. 1-1 against Liverpool, wow, which means we didn't even lose to Liverpool once throughout the whole season. Mm, that proves a lot already <laughs> about this cool underdog tactic. Lost 4-0 to the City, okay. Tough end to the season here, okay. Not too bad, lah, although we finished 8 in the end. Just slightly missed out from the 7th spot, the Europa League qualified spot, but I think this tactic is quite suitable for like teams that are predicted to finish in close to the relegation zone. But RDF did mention if this tactic using team like Brighton that are decent can play against some teams, you can go positive. But if you think you're not good enough, then you go balance. And then you think your team are one of the worst teams in the league, you can use cautious. If you enjoy this tactic tester, make sure you subscribe to the channel and also leave a thumbs up to this video. And I will see you again for other FM contents and tactic tester. Bye.